cleaner is on the left. Good afternoon, I'm Ron Smith from the OBIC Bioproducts Innovation Center. I want to thank you for joining the OBIC Bioproduct Network's latest presentation as part of our Bioproducts Commercialization Webinar Series. Today's webinar will cover the opportunities and synergies of participating in the 2014 Bioproducts Showcase and Conference. We're very fortunate to have a great lineup of speakers today. Uh, Denny Hall, the OBIC uh, Director, will serve as our moderator today. Program. Let me highlight uh, two quick logistical issues. If you have not already done so, please be sure your audio connection is on mute to reduce any audio interference and feedback during the program. Second, if you would like to ask a question of our speakers, we will have a few minutes of Q&A at the end of the program today. Please submit your questions directly to either myself uh, via the chat box at the right-hand side of your screen or via email to max at maximumcq.com. We will pass your questions on to our speakers. With that, I'd like to uh, begin by introducing our first speaker of the day, which is Denny Hall, the director of OBIC. Okay, thanks, Ron. And uh, everybody, thank you for joining us today. We're really excited about this event that's coming up in October. And I very much appreciate the, uh, the folks that are on the call with us today that will be participating and sharing their perspective about why this event's important. So this is a first of a kind, of, it's a kind event. You know, we're wanting to really shine a bright light on the bioproducts industry. And, and never has, has anyone pulled together an event that kind of uh, will really help our consumers and our, our buying public and our, our procurement officials to understand what we mean by bio-based and why it's so important. So uh, we have been doing some proprietary research on consumers' knowledge and, and awareness of what bioproducts are. And unfortunately, very few people today know much about bio-based. Uh, we hope that with this event, we begin to change that. Next slide. So, this is, if you've uh, been to our website, you've seen a little our program. Uh, we are spending a tremendous amount of time right now really focusing in on the needs of these procurement officials, these buyers of bio-based products, and helping them to understand the value of being at an event like this. So uh, I, we, we're working with the federal government to identify uh, federal uh, purchasers, uh, the procurement officials at the federal government, but also uh, was a participant in the National Association meeting with county officials and then also reaching out to both K through 12 and higher education and thinking about the needs of that public sector. But in addition to the public sector, we really are reaching out to these uh, professional buyers for retailers and other distributors of these kinds of materials. And so whether it's home improvement, office supply, grocery stores, specialty retails, online groups, or farm supply, we're hoping our, we're working our best to get those kinds of folks in attendance. So that's what we refer to as our magnet officials. That's who we're trying to get, and because they're there, you're going to want to be there too. So whether you're a bio-based product manufacturer, you're exactly in our sweet spot. We want to make sure you're there so that we can help tell your story. Or if you're a bio-based material producer, you need to be there so that we can help get your material in more of these products. And whether that's going to a bio-based product manufacturer or to some of the conventional product manufacturers out there, we want to make sure that these bio-based materials are are getting a, a bright light shined on them and increasing the amount of sales. And hopefully as a result of this project, lots of contracts will emerge. Thank you, Denny. And now I'd like to introduce our next speakers for this, this afternoon, Diane Johnson and Steve Drake. Diane and Steve are our 2014 Bioproducts World Event Coordinators and Consultants. Diane is a 1985 graduate of Kansas State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Agriculture. Through the years, her work has been extensive in promotions and marketing with a specialization in the agriculture and livestock industry. The last 22 years have been centered in advertising agency work. 
She has had her own business, Details by Design, for the last 17 years. This is a full-service event management, advertising, and marketing company. She also is a certified meeting professional, which is a coveted accreditation in the meeting planning industry, which recognizes individuals for their extensive knowledge of the business. Steve Drake is president of SCD Group Incorporated, a consulting company focused on strategy, content, cause, and discovery. He is editor of the SCD Daily Blog on associations and nonprofit organizations. He was president and owner of Drake and Company from 1992 to 2011, which was a St. Louis based certified company providing staff and headquarters for leading national associations. He has been involved in managing meetings and conferences for more than 35 years. That, Steve? Okay, I'm going to speak. Uh, good, good afternoon. I'm speaking on behalf of Diane. Um, what we put up on this slide is the overall schedule for the con showcase and conference. Um, and you can see the website. It's all, all this information about it is located at bioproductsworld.org. Um, the goal, and as the first, Denny said, the first time you've held it, the goal is um, 475 total attendees. The showcase part is the trade show. Uh, there we have a goal of 75 exhibitors. Uh, the conference part will be three general sessions, and then we have 16 educational breakout sessions uh, divided along four different tracks. And so people have a base. We'll be able to attend the topic time frame. And you can see the schedule here uh, opening basically Monday morning and running through Wednesday noon. Um, one of the things that we're announcing today is this 9 to 11 track, which will be uh, a competition for the Bioproducts Innovation of the Year. Uh, we'll be looking for people to nominate candidates for that award. The, the finalists will come in to the meeting and we'll, there'll be a judging panel and that selection will be announced. Uh, the plan is to announce it at the kickoff lunch. Um, we are now open on the website for sponsors and exhibitors. So if you go to, if you're interested in shopping around and see what's available and what opportunities are for sponsorships or exhibits, just go to the bioproductsworld.org. All right, thank you, Steve. Now I'd like to introduce our next speaker for the afternoon, Ms. Camille Poissat from Ubi France, North America. Camille is a trade advisor at the French Embassy Trade Office in Chicago. In this role, she facilitates introductions between North American and French companies working or interested in the United States and or Canadian markets. She has specialized in industry typical re with typical requests from French companies range from identifying resellers or clients to providing contacts and advice for incorporation and partnerships. Before moving to Chicago in 2012, Camille was working in Belgium as a logistics project manager for the company Preon, a world leader in the phosphate sector. She was given the opportunity to set up innovative ways to improve the logistics of the group in Belgium, but also in Spain and France and also in the UK. Camille holds a master's degree in business engineering from HEC, the business school of the University of Liège, Belgium. And with that, Camille, you can start, please. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, thank you, Ron and Denise, for giving me the opportunity to participate in this um, presentation today. Uh, so my name is Camille, and I'm a trade advisor at the French Embassy Trade Office in Chicago. Um, yes, the next slide, please. Thanks. So the French Embassy Trade Office is called UB France, um, and it's at the core of France public support mechanism for foreign trade. Trade it's the equivalent of the U.S. Commercial Service, if you are perhaps familiar with it. There's a network of uh, over 80 offices in 70 countries. It offers a complete range of products and services to assist French companies at each stage of their development in foreign markets by providing them with individual and specialized advice or by organizing collective operations during trade shows, for example. Uh, the UB France North American network is present in nine U.S. and Canadian cities, Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, Houston, Montreal, New York, San Francisco, Toronto and Vancouver, and employs almost 100 people. Uh, the next slide, please. Thank you. 
Um, our team in North America is organized by sector, so you can see here uh, the agro industry, then the transportation infrastructures and industries such as plastics, chemistry, and mechanical industries. The next sector includes fashion, design, and healthcare, and the light last one comprises new technologies, innovations, and services. This configuration allows the trade advisors to be specialized in, an, a, um, in one area uh, and to develop a deep knowledge and network in their respective sectors. Next slide, please. Thanks. We have a matchmaking role, so our, our objective is to put the French companies in contact with the right American counterparts. In this context, we've had the opportunity to collaborate with renowned American companies. So this slide showcases some of the companies we've had the privilege to partner with. Next slide. So now I will uh, give you some information about the French bio-based products industry. The chemical industry is a key sector for France, helping to develop other manufacturing activities and contributing to economic growth. The French chemical industry is ranked fifth in terms of global production and second in Europe after Germany. France is also at the cutting edge of green chemicals, with leading companies such as Violia Water, Orkima, and other large and smaller companies. For five years now, industrials from the agricultural sector or R&D to chemicals and bio-based products formulators have been involved in the recognition of this promising industry. The French government has decided to intensify the R&D in bio-based products. The objective is to set up for 2020 a competitive and international bio-based product manufacturing chain. In Europe, the chemical companies target a doubling of the bio-based resources used as feedstock for 2020, which represents a target of 20%. In order to support the industry, the European Union allocated a budget of 1.3 billion US dollars to a public private partnership called Biobased Industries Initiatives. 65% of this budget will be dedicated to innovation and pilot plans. Next slide. So, all this brings us to the participation of French companies to the Bioproducts World Showcase. The involvement of those French clusters in the showcase started with a partnership between the French IAR cluster and the OBIC. So the IAR cluster and its members are involved in developing technology and products to replace petroleum-based raw materials with agricultural, forestry, and algal plant production. This cluster invited all other clusters to join the event. The cluster mode um, focuses on materials and applications for sustainable use. Plastipolis is a plastic cluster focused on key issues such as technological innovation and international perspective, development of talents and skills, and market position in the future. Uh, we have also Agri Sudwest. Uh, this is a competitive cluster for the agriculture and food industry. Accelera um, specializes in chemistry and environment. Xylo Future and Fibre cover forest-based products. And the last one is Cereal Valley. Uh, this is the cereal-based uh, product. All those organizations decided to promote the Bioproducts World Showcase and invite the members to take part in it. The objective of the, the French will be to meet with different stakeholders uh, in the supply chain in order to initiate contacts, understand market needs, present the products and solutions to potential clients, and of course establish partnerships with local companies to exchange information about good practices or collaborate in order to enhance the use of bio-based products in both the American and the French market. So my role uh, will be to bring the French and American companies together in organizing B2B meetings, field trips, or in communicating in advance through the blog and social media, etc. So I'm available to answer any questions you may have about the French companies and clusters uh, participating. Uh, so thank you for your attention. 
Thank you very much, Camille. Um, I would now like to introduce our next speaker for the afternoon, Tom Fontana from the Ohio Soybean Council. Tom joined the staff of the Ohio Soybean Council in 2005 as its director. As Director of New Use Development, Tom was responsible for project management of the following areas, production research, new use research and development, bioproduct initiatives. Tom is currently the Director of Research and Education for the Ohio Soybean Council and has served in that position since 2013. Tom focuses his efforts on managing and growing OSC's production and environmental research projects as well as educational programs. He also serves as Director programs and development for the Ohio Soybean Council Foundation. With over 40 years of professional experience in sales, finance, project management, and public relations, Tom continues to be an important asset to this organization. Tom received his BA from Ohio State University, his MBA from Xavier University, and began his career as a program and budget analyst for the U.S. Army and as a budget specialist for Battelle Memorial Institute. He later served as Director of Franchise Sales and Development for Wendy's International in Dublin, Ohio from 1989 to 1992. Tom was the General Manager of Ameriflora in 1992. He then worked in the franchise food industry and has owned his own printing and ad specialty business before joining the Ohio Soybean Council. With that? No, before we turn it over to Tom, I just want to make a point. Um, the Products Innovation Center, which was established in 2005, would not have existed had it not been for the early vision and leadership provided by the Ohio Soybean Council. The Ohio Soybean Council pulled together uh, folks like uh, from Battelle and Ohio State University and said, you know, this is an opportunity for this state of Ohio to really become a leader in the area of bio-based products. And because of the leadership of the Ohio Soybean Council, something that we call OBIC today exists. And so before we let Tom, let Tom take over, I just want to add that a little remark of appreciation. So, Tom? Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Denny. I appreciate the opportunity to spend a few minutes with you today uh, and tell you why we think uh, this endeavor is such an important one. Uh, this is... Uh, Kind of leads up to what Denny was talking about. Um, the Ohio Soybean Council has been working on developing soy-based products for almost 20 years. And out of that effort, uh, nine years ago, nine, ten years ago, partnered with Battelle and the Ohio State University to help create OBIC uh, through the Ohio's Third Frontier Program. Uh, OBIC's primary focus has evolved over the years uh, at, to the point where now OBIC's main focus is expediting commercialization by connecting various parts of, of the value chain. And uh, the challenge has always been in the bioproducts arena is to get next. Sorry. The challenge has always been to get new technologies into the marketplace in a timely manner. Uh, we have invested a, uh, quite a bit of uh, funding over the last 15, 20 years to develop new products, and some of those are in the marketplace, but uh, it could be faster, and uh, you know the connections that could help that uh, certainly could be better. So uh, we look at narrowing the gap between research and commercialization, which I think OBIC and this conference and showcase uh, should be a tremendous asset in, in working towards that. Uh, another thing we like about the conference, uh, all domestic and international partners. Uh, we think that's of extreme value to soybean farmers. Uh, and we like the fact that there is an international component to this event. So why are, uh, you know, the main goal as we see it is that this has the potential to increase the use of bio-based feed stocks for industrial and consumer applications. This is something we are very interested in and, uh, and think that this conference is a big step towards doing that. So why? Why would Ohio Soybean Farmers and the Ohio Soybean Council want to participate 
and be a part of such an important uh, conference and uh, showcase. Well, to be honest with you, the IS Leading Council has supported this idea of an international so showcase from the inception and felt that OBIC would be the logical entity to organize and execute such a conference and uh, encouraged OBIC uh, to pursue this. Consequently, we have been a supporter of those efforts over the last uh, year or two. Um, and we're proud that the United Soybean Board and the Ohio Soybean Council are participating as a gold sponsor of the event. We encourage others to be sponsors as well. We think that uh, uh, lofty goals for participation in this, and if they are reached, this will be an unqualified success. Uh, our soybean farmers are basic to get really basic, they want to sell more soybeans. So how do you sell more soybeans? You create new markets for soybeans, you build further demand for soybeans. We happen to think that soy bioproducts and getting soy bioproducts to the marketplace is an extremely high priority when it comes to our organization. And our board is very, very supportive of these efforts. We do have some background noise that maybe someone might need to uh, mute if possible. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. I would now like to introduce our next speaker for the afternoon, Annie Petersman from Emory Oleochemicals. Annie is an area business manager at Emory Oleochemical in Cincinnati, Ohio. Annie has a BS in chemistry from the University of Cincinnati and an MBA from Thomas More College. Annie has over 30 years of experience with Emory with 15 years in manufacturing management, three years in SAP development, seven years in product management for ag products and lubes, and five years in marketing and sales. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Annie. All right. Uh, thanks, Denny. Um, Emory is uh, really excited to be able to participate in the World World Showcase on uh, bioproducts. Uh, we, we think it's really in uh, in where we look at a vision and where our company's going. It's going to complement that. If you go to the next slide, there is a. Uh, um, it, it, when you talk about sustainable chemistries, I think like 95% of our products have a raw material that has a backbone chemistry that starts with either tallow or palm kernel or corn or canola or soybean oil. So we talk about su sustainable chemistries. We're talking about who we are. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Uh, Emory is... Uh, uh, we're approximately, we're not a, a giant company, but we have a billion dollars a year in sales. Uh, we produce, uh, we're global. Uh, our North American uh, manufacturing is in Cincinnati, and uh, it, it's been there for 170 years. Uh, we also have oleochemical manufacturing at two sites in Germany. One's in Dusseldorf, uh, which is strictly oleochemicals, and one is more of uh, new sustainable chemistries. It's in Lockstedt. And, and then we also have uh, in Malaysia, we in the Kuala Lumpur area, we have manufacturing. But uh, we really, uh, what we're focused on is how do we use innovation, whether it's raw materials, finished products that are going to uh, uh, use these, you know, use natural chemistries. Uh, next slide. Let's get the picture overhead of our plant in Cincinnati. Uh, we've got about uh, 300, 300 products, uh, six employees. Uh, we're actually located in two cities, and there's a waterway. It goes, which was uh, developed by the Army Corps of Engineers. And um, initially, the, the Emory family uh, produced, produced uh, candles uh, when we were starting up in the 1850s. Uh, go ahead and go to the, the next slide. Uh, 
Um, and, and this is just a little bit of an overview. Uh, it depends on, you know, what country and, and the, what is the locale, but we use tallow and canolas and corn and soybean oils, and we, that feeds into some technology that is uh, oleochemical-based. It's hydrolysis, uh, distillation, fractionation, uh, ozonolysis, which is, which is actually uh, oxidation. And from that, we make fatty acids, dimers, isosterics, uh, dibasic acids like azelaic, monobasics like pelargonic, and glycerin. And then uh, you can see in that right-hand column, those are all, that's a, you know, that's not all the markets, but that's a large number of markets that use natural chemistries. And, and when we're talking about innovation, we're looking at, besides that raw material that's tallow, you know, w what we hope to come out with is, you know, w what other natural, natural raw materials can we use? Uh, we used, uh, we made a run of high -like soybean oil, uh, three quarters of a million pounds last June. Um, what about uh, algae oils? I mean, can we make those fatty acids from those raw materials that are matches? Or we, can we make products that are even, uh, that are different enough that, that will differentiate them and bring some added value, to, you know, to our customers? Um, the, um, you know, when we look at our fatty acid and dimers and sterics, can we derivatize those? Can those be something that somebody else can make a sustainable product that has been petroleum-based? Uh, go to the next slide. Uh, this is our uh, our six businesses. We have a agro business, a bio lube, a, uh, a bio polyol business, a green plastics, a home and wellness, and an oleo basics. And these all fit in with the with our with our uh, sustainable chemistries. Uh, an, an example are our uh, our agro products. We have herb natural soft chemistry. Herb, uh, herbicides and pesticides, where our nice, I mean, our fatty acids can be used um, against mosquitoes that are resistant to current sides and that, uh, you know, carry malaria and other diseases. They're finding that uh, our material is, is very successful in uh, treating them, and it's a soft chemistry with no residue. We have biolubes that are natural products that replace petroleum. Uh, for the biopolyols, we're building four reactors in the greater Cincinnati area that are uh, going to use natural products for the manufacture of uh, raw materials that are biopolyols that can be used for flexible and rigid polyurethane foams instead of uh, petrochemicals. Um, uh, next slide. So why is Emory participating and why do we think it's a great – uh, a, a great opportunity for us is that it fits with us. We have 170 years in natural products. Um, we look at this no matter what, the, whether it's us or other manufacturing companies, uh, um, that, that there is a potential to reduce our carbon imprint. Um, we, we think that our products will help reduce the demand on petroleum products. Um, we think that our chemistries have a, a lower pollution and less harsh chemistries that, that will uh, be discharged, uh, it, it, you know, atmosphere or water, water pollutants. Um, a big thing is that you know, if, you're related, if you're interested in these kind of chemistries, we're, we're seeing market trends and society needs that are out there and trying to, to uh, spread the knowledge of, of, you know, what we can do and what other companies can do. Um, and, then, and we are seeing the growth in demand for natural products. Uh, it's not the, uh, well, only if it's cheaper or only if it's this or that. There, there's demand, and, and it, it's coming from the end users. Um, next slide. Thank you. And uh, if anybody has any questions. All right. Thank you very much, Annie. That was awesome. Our next speaker for this afternoon is Bert Herring. And Bert is with Biofiber Solutions International. Bert lives in uh, Seal Beach, California, where he serves as the president of the company. Bert is a 40-plus year veteran of the office products industry, having served in multiple senior sales management positions for several major office product corporations. He has overseen national accounts, including Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, Walmart, Target, 
Kmart, Costco, Amazon, and United Stationers. He has managed several national sales organizations. In 2003, Bert founded his first sale and distribution company to assist major office product corporations in improving product outreach in the mass market, college bookstore, and commercial office products channels. Since, his specialty has become connecting major accounts to sales sources. In 2012, Bert founded Biofiber Solutions International and became the first producer of the USDA certified BioBlend process for providing 100% tree-free products. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Bert. Thank you very much. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, yep. we can. Hey, great. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank the people at OVEC, Denny, Ron, Max, and Dustin for inviting me here, and also the great people at the USA, Ron Buckholz, Kate Lewis, and Paul Thompson. Um, when I was starting to do this presentation, um, it dawned on me, you know, why would you want to be at this product showcase? And I think that just to start off this thing, the fact that I'm here talking to you right now is a testament to what OBIC can do and how they pull people together. Because without OBIC, I can tell you I certainly would not be sitting here right now. Uh, we just started our company a couple of years ago, and um, OBIC and the USDA have been fantastic in helping us uh, network with, with you all. And I just I thank you very much for that. So. Uh, next slide, please. Um, about BFSI, uh, we are a company, uh, Biofiber Solutions International. We're California-based. Uh, we specialize in the production, sale, distribution of sustainable USDA-certified bio-based products. Our distribution partners include United Stationers, Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, and the great people at the FSSI Ind Independent Dealer Network. Go ahead, next, please. Okay, um, just to give you a little background on what the blend is, um, what we've developed, it's the uh, first and only uh, copy paper uh, source that is um, uh, simultaneously meets and exceeds the EPA federal requirement for post-consumer content and has become certified and utilizes the USA, USDA BioPreferred product label. Um, our products were developed by uh, specifically for acquisition by the 130 U.S. federal agencies and their contractors. Uh, the paper is produced from a strategic tree-free fiber blend of 30% recovered agricultural residue and 70% post-consumer waste, meaning that uh, this paper uh, basically meets and exceeds the comprehensive procurement guidelines for, th for the EPA uh, for post-consumer waste and meets the executive orders 13514 and 1342 uh, for the uh, bio-preferred uh, mandate. So essentially, uh, the federal uh, procurement people get a two-for-one. They get the uh, post-consumer and the bio-credit. Uh, next slide. Okay, um, our products. So to date, we have developed a number of products that are already in the market. Uh, our products include uh, bio, bio blend copy paper. We have three SKUs, three stock keeping units of that. Uh, we are working with, with Smead Manufacturing to develop our uh, file folder line. Uh, they have one product for tab file folder, and uh, we're going to bring out colors uh, very shortly. Uh, they have distribution in all the major uh, retailers, Staples, uh, Office Depot, Office Max, et cetera. We then have a, another partner called Roaring Spring Paper Products in Roaring Spring, Pennsylvania. Uh, we've created uh, nine basic products uh, with Roaring Spring, including writing tablets, steno books, uh, composition books, etc. And finally, we have a envelope manufacturing facility where we manufacture uh, nine, eight different uh, products in an envelope stock. So. Um, Together, we think we have a pretty significant uh, product portfolio to offer at first. Uh, just for your information, um, the typical office, when they spend what they spend on office products, 50% of the typical spend is in copy paper and toner. So these products combined uh, uh, really account for a significant amount of office product spend. We also has we also have a number of other products that are already. Uh, certified as well by the USDA. 
which we will roll out uh, in stages as we go along. Okay, next slide. You know, uh, why would we want to be in the uh, OVIC product showcase? Well, there's, there's many, many reasons, and uh, certainly my colleagues before me touched on many of them. Uh, but, you know, value is one that we always look at uh, in business. I ask myself, you know, what, what would it cost me as a businessman to, first of all, arrange appointments with all these terrific people that are going to be attending the show? How much would it cost me to fly and visit with all these people and follow up, uh, and how much time would it take me? So right off the bat, this, uh, this opportunity to uh, have everybody on ro one roof is a, is a super value for us. Uh, the people that we intend to meet there, uh, having everybody under one roof to meet together, all the stakeholders. Um, I can't think of a better way to expose your products, uh, complete your network. Uh, we use the word connectivity uh, by saying that not only do you meet people, but you connect the dots with uh, the various people that make your business go. So in this case, uh, we have... Um, all the people that we do business with hopefully will be at the show. We're going to have a bioproducts pavilion, which will include um, all the manufacturing partners that we have. We'll have all the uh, office products manufacturers of bio-based products under one roof, and we'll also have um, the various uh, customers that we have, uh, including Office Depot, Staples, and uh, and dealers. So. Uh, basically, we're just very excited to be part of this and look forward to meeting you all there. And uh, uh, thank you very much all for this opportunity. All right. Thanks very uh, much, Bert. You... Oh, you're welcome. I have one more slide there. Oh, okay. This is just a contact, but there you go. It's it's showtime. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you very again, much. Bert. Uh, thank you. Now I'd like to introduce our uh, last speaker for the afternoon. Uh, Mr. Todd Campbell from the USDA Rural Development Office. Todd serves as the Energy Policy Advisor for the USDA um, Rural Development, and he focuses on renewable energy and bio-based economy industry development. Prior to joining USDA, Todd was the Rural Agriculture Director at Clean Energy Works in Washington, D.C., and also the National Rural Outreach Director for Obama for America campaign in Chicago. With that, I'd like to turn it over to you, Todd. Yeah, thanks, and happy to be joining uh, everybody for this webinar and looking forward to the showcase uh, later this year. And certainly a, a priority here at the Department of Agriculture. Um, <clears throat> I work as uh, the Energy Policy Advisor for the Secretary in the Rural Development Mission Area, and <clears throat> excuse me, along with uh, uh, work on energy increasingly, uh, uh, we uh, have have been focused on uh, the bio-based economy and uh, really capturing the opportunities uh, across the country for uh, rural revitalization and certainly uh, important to the rural development mission area uh, where in the last uh, census we saw for the first time a real uh, decline in population uh, in rural America. Uh, the fact that we, we can and must do a better job of creating economic opportunity and, and certainly from the Secretary's perspective, uh, looking at ways that we can create an efficient, renewable, and bio-based economy uh, is one of his four pillars uh, that, that will help uh, revitalize uh, opportunity in rural America. Uh, next slide. So the, the recently, as you know, uh, uh, although we've been talking about it for about 26 months, uh, we, we uh, finally have a new farm bill, the Agriculture Act of 2014. Uh, in that Title IX uh, authorization, uh, uh, known as the Energy Title, uh, has a number of different programs, some uh, enhancements, uh, uh, but all in uh, uh, important uh, robust mandatory funds which give our uh, uh, partners that we're working with on project development certainty uh, that the money's going to be there and gives our staff certainty to run programs from year to year. And I won't go through uh, all of the programs, but I know folks are, are familiar with the Bio Preferred Program, lab labeling and procurement, um, but really a suite across the board helping 
uh, to, to capture the opportunities uh, with bio-based fuel, heat and power, uh, renewable chemicals, and bio-based products. Uh, next slide. And so uh, the energy and the bioeconomy programs, while they do cover uh, uh, really the gamut of renewable energy, uh, an important one to recognize uh, that, was, uh, that was added in, especially for our loan guarantee and commercial programs, is that last one on the slide, the renewable chemicals and bio-based products. And where we've had some ability to fund with our business and industry loan guarantee, which I'll give a couple of uh, examples of later, um, it really opens up for uh, uh, the larger programs to be able to fund pioneer plants and first-of-a-kind technology. Uh, next slide. And so why is this important? And especially, uh, you know, focusing on, on biomass and, and uh, the bioeconomy. Uh, for the rural development mission area uh, uh, in, in improving the quality of life of rural America, creating those economic opportunities, uh, we see uh, potential revenues generated across the supply chain from the uh, research and, and production, logistics through conversion to end use. And at each point of those uh, uh, of the, the stages in that uh, supply chain, um, we see uh, revenues go into the growers, the feedstock depots, the refiners, and to the project, project distribution. Uh, also seeing ancillary uh, benefits across the supply chain as well uh, for those uh, uh, raw material uh, uh, providers, catalysts, uh, chemicals, insurance, equipment. Uh, so all across the supply chain, uh, uh, just a tremendous amount of, of potential for revenue and, and economic development opportunities uh, across the country. Uh, and I'm going to talk just a, uh, about a couple of the programs. Next slide. Just a couple of the programs that, that uh, we're excited uh, to have mandatory money and to get up and running again. Um, and, and really the chicken and the egg, egg situation, whether or not we have the biomass feedstock supply chains in place to provide the material to the facilities and then uh, having the facilities that can accept uh, those things that farmers grow and foresters harvest. So the biomass crop assistance program, as you know, uh, robust uh, uh, mandatory funding, $25 million per year for establishment and matching payments uh, to get those uh, uh, crops established and, and to get biomass from the field to the plant gate. Next slide. And over the last uh, four years, we've seen great success. Uh, as you can see from the map, uh, very good geographic distribution of the projects, opportunities for all areas of the country. Uh, and, and just in the initial uh, uh, tranche from the 2008 Farm Bill funds, we've seen impact for more than 50,000 acres, 1,000 uh, producers with a variety of different energy crops uh, uh, being produced uh, in the in that establishment, and as well on the on the uh, uh, star, uh, storage, harvest, and transportation, uh, seeing a a, gra uh, uh, a market for agricultural residues and and uh, uh, low value uh, uh, woody biomass uh, uh, getting into production. Next slide. So on the flip side of that, we've got the biorefinery assistance program. So we've got the biomass uh, being established, supply chains being developed. Uh, on the flip side of that, we need the conversion technologies to be able to take this biomass and add value, uh, produce these fuels, chemicals, and products uh, that, that can go to market. Uh, so the biorefinery assistance program, another one, uh, $200 million in mandatory funding at, at the budget level, That'll translate into around six or seven hundred million dollars at the program level for for first of a kind commercial scale projects. Uh, the changes in in this funding round uh, in this farm bill, uh, there's an inclusion for renewable chemicals and a set aside for bio-based product manufacturing, uh, up to fifteen percent of the budget. Uh, and next slide. A couple uh, examples of awards that have been uh, made in the past. Sapphire Energy, Algae Oil, uh, down in New Mexico. Enios is using uh, uh, woody biomass, tree, tree uh, uh, woody waste uh, diverted from landfills uh, uh, 
uh, helping to uh, to provide a, a, a outlet for some of the citrus screening, uh, possibly down in Florida, Fremont Community Digester using uh, food waste. Uh, and, and the four conditional commitments working towards closing, uh, as you can see, North Carolina, Nevada, Iowa, Oregon, uh, very good geographic distribution and, and opportunities for all areas of the country. Next slide. And just uh, closing out the last of the 2008 money, uh, we have eight applications that are currently under review. I uh, won't spend too much time, but, but good uh, uh, technological uh, diversity coming in as well and, and uh, uh, some areas that we haven't seen. Next slide. Uh, so the bioeconomy performance, this is something that the Secretary has asked for and uh, asked for us to, uh, to focus on. Um, this is just in the rural business and cooperative programs. Uh, uh, outside of that biorefinery assistance program, we are targeting at least 3% of available funds uh, in our loan, loan guarantee and grant programs uh, from rural development to focus on uh, projects that support bio-based products and, and bioenergy. Uh, as you can see, a number of uh, projects funded, a number of different programs in nearly every state in the country uh, participating. Next slide. And so the business and industry loan guarantee, one that we have been using, uh, is limited to $25 million. Uh, the biorefinery assistance can go up to uh, $250 million. Uh, but, but on these smaller programs, we are working with companies uh, such as Laurel Biocomposite that's using uh, distiller's grain to, uh, to make into a, a product that replaces traditional petroleum-based resins. And uh, that uh, project is supporting uh, a dozen uh, workers in a town uh, less than 1,000 people and helping to create that economic opportunity and add value to the biofuel, biofuel production taking place in the area. Next slide. Another example of a larger project, Mirant Corporation, uh, is, a, is uh, up on uh, the, the high end of the loan guarantees that we've issued, $25 million. Uh, producing 15,000 tons of succinic acid per year and 18,000 tons of ammonium sulfate. And I understand there are a number of different uh, other uh, 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 platform chemicals, uh, renewable chemicals that are being produced, uh, expanding their portfolio. Uh, just a, a tremendous uh, 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 addition to our biofuel portfolio, and we're seeing a lot more of those renewable chemical companies uh, come into business and industry, and we're looking forward to funding some of the larger ones with the biorefinery assistance program. Next slide. And so I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, as well our bio-preferred program, uh, that bio-based product labeling that I think uh, has been discussed quite a bit on the, the phone, uh, uh, the webinar. Uh, we are looking uh, to, to open that up in the near future, so stay tuned. Um, as, as mentioned before, $3 million per year to help administer that program and uh, uh, to, to support uh, our work with, uh, with those companies that are out there uh, putting that, that stamp uh, uh, USDA-certified bio-based product label. Uh, next program, our next slide, sorry. Uh, as well, uh, on the procurement side, we are also trying to help to create uh, markets and, and offtakes for the products that are being produced uh, through the federal procurement. Uh, beginning uh, uh, this year, we are including bio-based clauses in all new janitorial uh, and custodial uh, uh, procurement contracts uh, for, for operations and maintenance. Uh, we're also uh, requirements to to all USDA construction, food service, vehicle maintenance uh, over the next few months. Uh, uh, while we're just baselining what the, the federal usage is uh, from last year and, and setting what I think are modest goals this year, we do expect to exceed those goals and to continue to, uh, to raise those requirements over the coming years. Next slide. And so, uh, again, uh, this is an exciting opportunity with, uh, with uh, uh, the potential of capturing, uh, you know, conservatively somewhere around, uh, you know, maybe $250 billion per year uh, utilizing uh, the, the billion tons of biomass that, that could be available uh, in the next uh, decade. 
Uh, so we're going to be working diligently here at USDA and, and across the federal government, uh, partnering with companies, partnering with states, uh, 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 with our land grants and, and other institutions out there to, to really tell the story of the bioeconomy, uh, to help get these projects up and running and to, to showcase the success that, uh, that we have across the country. So uh, with that, uh, uh, as always, you can go to usda.gov slash energy. Uh, that is our energy website, but we'll also have information on our, our bio-based economy uh, programs uh, and a number of good tools on there uh, to help project developers uh, to get to staff contacts and to look at the, the uh, variety of, of information at our National Agriculture Library, uh, whether it's dealing with conversion technology, uh, feedstock production, or uh, other information across the supply chain. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions and uh, appreciate the time here. All right. Thank, thank you very much, Todd. Um, we do, if our speakers can hang in there with us, we do have a, um, a question. We'd, we'd like to open it up for uh, question and answers right now. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Denny. Okay. The first question uh, is I'd like to ask this to Camille, Tom Fontana, Annie, and Bert. And what, I, what I'm curious to know from you is, can you describe the audience that you most want to have in attendance at this showcase? Can you help us to, um, to know how we can help you the most by recruiting that type of audience? So Camille, you first. Uh, well, thank you. Um, for now, we don't have the exact names of French companies that then want to attend given so we will be able to describe the audience um, better when we have all the, the details about those companies um, but what I think is that they may be interested in uh, everything related to R&D um, and also all the um, uh, the manufacturers for example or the, the people who will buy uh, the bio-based feedstock or the bio-based materials. Uh, this is what I understood uh, with the first meeting we had with uh, the, the different French clusters. Uh, but I will be able to give you more information if you want uh, later when we have the list of, of companies attending and the exact audience they, they would like to meet. Okay. Thank you. Tom? Thank you. Uh, I, I would say the most important would be to have, I'm going to be very parochial here, soy-based products companies in attendance uh, with the opportunity to meet folks who could buy their products. Um, state, local, state, federal procurement people, if somehow we could get into that market, uh, hmm. That market can be a very tough one to get into, but once you're into it, it's usually a good one. I think that would be uh, uh, very high on the list, is to get the people actually buying the products for various government entities there uh, to learn what's available and how they might uh, uh, procure those. Yeah. So, Tom, one thing that I learned recently was that the state of Ohio – has a procurement agreement to buy soy-based toner, and that contract here in Ohio has about a $400 million per year spend. Imagine what that would be like if we had 50 states or the federal government yeah, also huge. purchasing this, this type of material. So uh, we'll keep working on that. Good. Annie? Yeah, uh, I, I agree about, uh, about the government and, and, and public health. Uh, for particularly for our egg chemicals, uh, that is, uh, you know, when we're trying to get an awareness of the products that we have that are out there, and, and what they can mean, can mean compared to some of the harsher chemistries. Um, I, I think for our for our, our lube and our biopolyols, our uh, you know uh, the the end users for uh, for 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 our lubes. That have you know a lot of them that have uh, uh, have they, they'll have programs on uh, that, that they want to have sustainable chemistries or they want to have more uh, less petrochemicals, but uh, to have them come in you know to have it advertised that they come in can come in and find out uh, what's uh, what's available. 
Uh, I, I know Mark Durkholz is interested in uh, uh, what people can offer to us who could be there. They could be a benefit for them and us, uh, different types of alternative feedstocks that we could use in the, you know, at our site. I mean, so it, it's it's pretty wide, but uh, the uh, the comment on a, a government and, and a public health it, uh, really hit, hits the nail on the head. Okay, thank you, Bert. Thank you, Denny. There's really two things that I I, I think are important to uh, to us anyway, and uh, one is um, the whole idea of you know what what is the uh, value of a bio-based product. You know, in the federal government space, it's 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 known and uh, very clear. But a lot of our people on the uh, the public side really don't know what the value of a bio-based product is. I had a a show a couple of weeks ago with uh, the California Association of Junior Colleges, and we were talking about bio products, and I'm you know it was just they went blank. You know, so there's no. So I, I would hope that uh, you know that's one thing that we can you know as a group come up with the the proper, uh, you know, value proposition on uh, the whole bio-based economy to the, you know, to the public in general. And secondly, um, you know, we have uh, worked, I don't know, a couple of years, and we've developed a product line that is, uh, as I said, bio, bio-preferred and, um, you know, that has the post-consumer waste. And we have, uh, we have manufacturing set up. We have, you know, the whole uh, distribution channel pretty well set. But we're, we don't have access really to the to the government procurement people you know i i just uh, it's kind of um sounds a little you know strange but that's really what we need is access to people that you know are aware of the fact that our products exist and that the products are available for them to to use and to fulfill their uh their obligations as far as uh, percentages of purchases and those kinds of things so i think those two things are are what are really important uh, to us that we we have our, our whole distribution channel at the show, and then the, 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 as a group, we can show that we can that we produce great products and we can deliver them, you know, on time at a, at a good price. So that's that's kind of what we're trying to get out of this. Okay, super. Thank you, everybody. Um, and so, Todd, I, I'll just say this to to you, and and we'll we'll be putting a squeeze on Tony Logan here at Rural Development in the state of Ohio as well to get any help we can have to have some of these federal procurement officials in attendance would be, would be awesome. We'd value that greatly. Um, also want to, before we close, just be sure and note that the BioPreferred program is uh, fully funded and fully operational. The, the $3 million that, uh, that Todd mentioned is uh, in the coffers now at USDA BioPreferred program, and uh, they're ready to rock and roll. And let's get another couple hundred or another thousand uh, bio preferred products on the list. So, uh, do we have any other questions? Hey, hey, I just thought another group that I would it would help me uh, in different parts of Emory is uh, if there could be any participation by the NOP for the National Organic Program um, to have people there. They could uh, understand some of the things that we're doing and and uh, they, they could maybe help us move into the organic program and, and uh, what we can do to, uh, to, to, you know, to really get more in that direction. Uh, that's something that we struggle with, and, and being able to meet some more people from that area would be a big help. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, uh, a, another question that's come in via our um, chat box. Chat box, thank you. And um, uh, asking about other uh, countries or other international participants. Uh, we're certainly welcoming any and all participants. We do have a very strong relationship with uh, a group called WinTech, which is a, a cluster of cluster organizations in Europe, and we'll be reaching out through them. But we'd love to have uh, others uh, realizing that Europe is a a uh, very important uh, uh, bioproducts uh, community. Uh, we'd love to have others from, from Europe as well. Um, in addition, the interest relative to bio-based plastics, uh, that's a, a very important part of our program here at OBIC and, and thinking along the lines of not only plastics in the way of products that would be marketed, whether they be toys or materials or uh, all kinds of various applications of plastics, 
but also in the packaging type of application. So, so um, uh, yeah, we do. Well, I, I know. <laughs> um, I, I think that's it. Do you have anything else, Ron? Are you ready to shut us down? Yep. Um, I'd just like to really thank our speakers today. Um, we've had a, had a had a great webinar today. Uh, Diane Johnson and Steve Drake, uh, Camille Poissot from Mubi France. Uh, Tom Fontana from OSC, Annie Petersman from Emory Oleo Chemical, Bert Herring from BFSI, and also Todd Campbell from USDA Rural Development. Thank you so much for, for uh, being with us today. We also want to thank all of you uh, who've joined us as participate, participants this afternoon. We hope you will join us again for our next OBN event in May, where we will explore exciting bioproducts commercialization efforts of our OBN partners in California. Um, if you're not a member of the OBN Bioproduct Network yet, I highly encourage you to visit our website and find out more about us and to download a membership application. Membership in the OBIC Bioproduct Network will ensure your access to great programming opportunities, such as our networking events and annual meeting, and will help to keep your company at the forefront of happenings in the bioproducts industry. And again, I want to thank you for participating in the OBIC Bioproduct Network webinar series. We look forward to having you join us all again soon. Thank you.